Hi and welcome to another video in the RHCE video series. Today's video is on Ansible variables. So Ansible variables are um, values that could potentially be different uh, that we can either um, gather from the system or uh, manually set um, per system or per group of systems to allow us to have flexibility within our playbooks. So we could have potentially, um, we want to do a, a, an example would be like a check. So perhaps we're checking if post the restart of the HTTP server that the service is running and we can do like a check that the port is actually listening. Um, of course, in not in every single case, the same HTTP port will be used. So maybe you could use port 80 or 443 or you could have port 8080 or something like that. So you could potentially have a variable to capture the differences between the systems in um, perhaps the uh, inventory file or the like. Or you could have, uh, you can also have what's called facts, which is what we'll uh, do in the next video. And that will be uh, variables that we actually gather from the end client. So it could be um, any kind of system value that we have, um, perhaps where something is installed, all that sort of thing. Is it installed as well? It could be like that as well. So um, yeah, um, so the first first thing to be to mention is about valid variable names. So there are quite some uh, just some specific rules around it. So uh, a variable cannot um, contain any uh, spaces uh, in the name. It, it can have underscores and and that sort of thing um, and numbers and letters, but yeah, the uh, space is not allowed. Also. Um, Variables cannot begin with a anything other than a letter, um, so it sh yeah it should be a letter, and then you can have the underscores or um, dashes or whatever. Just no spaces. It's f and or um, it cannot begin with a letter or a number. Sorry. So let's do the first thing is launch the terminal as always, and. We just do a sudo bash to make my life easier. Okay, so we're gonna have a make a new directory. Let's just do a move of modules 101, and we'll just make it a new folder called uh, variables 101. Actually, I didn't want to do a move. I actually want to do a cp, but um, we can move it back later on. That's fine. Okay, so we should have, let's go into variables 101. So I've got a couple YAML files from before. I've also got the inventory file. So the, let's do the first thing. Let's go in here and set some values. So, so we go into inventory. So we've got our client. Let's have um, server two server one um, equals ten zero two dot nine so server two and civil underscore host equals ten zero two dot ten. Okay, so these are this is actually a good example of a variable. So that's a very quick one is the, the variable is ansible host equals and that gives us um, the IP address to resolve this these names so in some cases um, you may not have DNS to be able to actually resolve these names so you have to give it this variable to actually be able to reach it by directly by IP you've got routing but you haven't got DNS so in some cases that could be a, a particular case and you would want to, you want to do that there so what we can also have is uh, let's do an example I found so it's quite a good one so HTTP underscore port and we can have 8080 and this one we can have HTTP underscore port equals 80 and then we can have PKG equals HTTP D that's package equals HTTP D so what we do now is we'll write a very quick um, Ansible script to just gather the host variables. So we just call it host underscore vars.yaml. 
and as always actually let's continue to use vim because that does it in such a, ni a much better way um, gives us some bit more formatting so insert here three dashes you know it's a yaml file now dash space name um, it's uh, view the host variables okay we can do hosts all so we can target all hosts tasks so what we're going to actually undertake as part of this and we're going to undertake first thing we'll give it a name um, let's get the get the value of the variable HTTP port so it's just the information what will print out um, <clears throat> it will allow us to uh, get that useful information and provide it in some nice way the HTTP port is and then we do curly brackets to say I want to expand on this variable so two curly brackets start and the end with the message so I know then Ansible knows that this is a variable and I need to do something with it and then let's do another name and then we can do uh, get the variable pkg get the let's do the, yeah get the variable pkg and then again debug because we need to get the message message the the package installed is and then we can do again double curly brackets pkg double curly brackets close quote and that should be a perfectly valid Ansible script so let's execute the playbook we just created so Ansible playbook minus i inventory and then host vars so it's going to fail on those two dummy systems I've created but let's let it run anyway because I've only got the single client of my lab obviously it's uh, it's quite a resource intensive to have to do so many multiple um, hosts but yeah okay so we've got the gathering facts okay for client one which is the one I expect to work the other two we're going to get failed to connect by SSH just fine um, task so get the value of the variable port so that's what I've sent out um, as the, the name so it's, uh, it's given out uh, there and then we've got the message which is that debug and then hate to port is 80 and then the package installed is HTTPD. So we could also have, if I go back into the file, um, oh, so if I go back into the inventory and just update, say, HTTP port to 8080, we would immediately see that changed. In the response there so you can see the variables being picked up quite nicely there so that's um, just a nice um, way to set up host variables so that's just a nice way to set up host variables quickly before I forget I'll just set this to the actual correct value as we may need that later So, um, so once you've got, so you've got the idea of the uh, setting a variable at a host level, you can obviously also set that at a group level. So again, it's pretty similar to how we have with the inventory file previously. We can create groups here, so we can have um, let's have app servers. Um, 
let's just do web servers probably would have been better to have um, that can be web servers this can be the app server then it makes a bit more logical sense to me uh, not that it matters okay <clears throat> so and then we can have we can actually move these variables lower down <clears throat> so we can do web servers okay colon bars or variables and then in here we can have the same port equals 80 pkg equals httpd and we can then remove it from the individual hosts so if you've got commonality there what's the point of typing it two three times um, when you can potentially do it in a nice way like this so it's a much nicer way of um, handling that sort of data <clears throat> so so if I rerun the playbook you actually see the output hasn't changed at all because the variable still been set uh, at that level so again if I update this to something interesting let's just do HTTP for instance we run the playbook we can see that the uh, variable is returning nicely in there so that's pretty simple but you can see there's a lot of power there where we can set specific variables where we need it where things are maybe a bit custom on system certain systems or groups of systems in that way uh, with um, with variables uh, you can also have what's called um, project variables so these variables can still be um, like group variables but they can be specifically for this particular project so a good example would be um, I had previously with a larger application so as part of the upgrade um, solution they would actually provide an entire project so you'd un uh, you untar that project file uh, directory and it would have all these um, it would have the entire uh, additional uh, variables that would be required um, or um, formatted in a relevant way so you pretty much just uh, execute the, the playbook and you'll pull out all the variables as part of it um, so you don't have to have it in your specific inventory file so it could be a particular project variable so let's make another directory called uh, variable project <laughs> very changeable one um, so we can cp our inventory into variable project if we go into variable project now we should have the inventory we can also cp our um, host bars into here okay so we've got a couple of files there so now we need to make another directory called host bars make dir oops make dir and just host underscore vars host variables and then we would need Um, a variable to to give us a bit of information so so what we have is create a file for the Pacific server so if we create um, so if we do VIM and then do it on client one oh, I'm not in the right directory so CD what to do VIM host files slash um, what's the server name our client one okay and then we can set it in here so HTTP hyphen port underscore port equals 80 pkg oh, you can do it in this format I think it'd be nice though. equals 
HTTPD. Okay, I'll right quit. So I've set that. So now we can just, on our inventory, we can then remove these completely. And right quit. So we've got no variables in here at all. Okay, so we should be able to execute our host files again. Uh, Ansible hyphen playbook hi, minus i inventory. Oh, did I copy the? No, I didn't. Okay, so I need to actually copy because it's a project. I need the Ansible config in my directory here. And let's try this now. So Ansible hyphen playbook minus i inventory and then hostfiles.yaml. Okay, it wants a dictionary format. Okay, so that's where I've made a mistake here. So what I need to do is like this. So it wants in a very specific format, in like a dictionary format. So that should solve that. Do I include the space? No, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it's very finicky. Let's just clear the screen and run that again. Yep, okay. So yeah, space and the colon is very much needed. Um, and we can see, yeah, it's the HTTP port is 80 and the package installed is HTTPD. Okay, so yeah, that was a little bit of fun there. Um, just one thing to note is, um, the Ansible config file. We actually do have an inventory in here. So we could potentially set that in here. So I know I'm doing the minus I every time. It's kind of force of habit. But if you know you can have a very set inventory, you can obviously configure it in the Ansible config, even in the etc directory, because it will go to that every single time anyway by default. Um, so yeah, that's a good way of, if you're going to have a set inventory, you can use that. So I guess another thing you can do is actually have the variables in the playbook themselves. So um, let's just copy the host vars yaml to um, playbook underscore vars yaml. Did I do the was thing? No, I said vi. Okay, that's good fun. Um, okay. So make sure you do the right command. Um, okay, so view all the host variables. So let's just change this to client one so I don't get any errors anymore. Um, okay, so where am I gonna set the variables? So I'm gonna set it under hosts. So we do vars. And then again, you can see VIM makes everything so much easier. All the formatting is done for you. With um, with this writing these particular YAML files, they they are very finicky about exactly where everything's placed and how it's configured. So it's very good. It does the syntax highlighting and it also does all the spacing, and it makes it look look nice as well. So um, I really recommend it, definitely. So we've got the vars, so we can set it exactly how we set it before. So HTTP hyphen port uh, space 80 and then we can have package and then we have HTTPD. Okay, so we will now get the values from here. So HTTP port is HTTP port. Perhaps let me just name it something else so it doesn't try and get it. So let's just call it uh, HTTP port one I'm very um, okay so then be HTTP underscore port one and then package one so we know 100% it's not coming from anywhere else in the um, config and we can get some more inf more interesting um, files if you want to let's do a another message and get the host name the Host name is 
and we can get this so we can actually display the host name of who we're querying because that's a predefined variable uh, we've also got stuff like oh you can see it's not highlighted that in blue because i haven't finished the other one off properly so let me just go across and um finish that off properly yep close that off there we go now um and we can do let's get the ansible version so ansible version is and it's ansible underscore version so you can see there's quite a good name and convention this sort of things and you can look them up there is a hell of a lot so let's now run this again so ansible i have been playbook minus i inventory and then playbook vars let's see what happens so it's saying about uh, the duplicate key oh, so it's only it doesn't like my okay yep 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 so the way i formatted it is slightly wrong i can see okay so what i'm doing what i shouldn't be doing here is i'm using that key message multiple times so that's what it's moaning about so if i go back to the message Warning while constructing a mapping from variables da, 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 line 13 column 21 found a duplicate dictionary key message using the last defined value only. So the last defined value was Ansible version, so hence that's why it's used that. So what I should be doing actually is if I go back up to the top here and do message here, and then all I've got to do actually is just do a line like that, just a dash. formatting and then rerun the, the playbook so thankfully no message this time and we can see now we've got ok client one port is 80 and we can see the package installed is HTTPD the host name is client one the Ansible version is this so yeah, we can see all the messages we've asked for, which is great. Okay, so I think the final thing to do um, is to show you how to actually pass variables at the command line. So there may be cases where you don't want to actually hard code it somewhere in, in, the, in a playbook or an inventory, but you do want to pass a particular variable. So if you set, um, if you set a variable at the command line and have the highest precedence, um, that means that it will be it will be run it will be set um, above any other. So we can use it to override. So we got the HTTP value in that um, one we just created now. So uh, what was it called now? It's playbook bars, wasn't it? Yep. So we've got the HTTP port set to 80. So let's override it and set it to uh, 80. 80. Something very exciting. Um, so, so we can do the same thing again. So, Ansible playbook minus i inventory, and then minus. Let's do minus e here. Minus e, or or you can do minus minus extra hyphen vars, and that would do the same thing. But I keep it in the minus. The, the, the small flags. It's easier to remember anyway. And we can have we can have then let's do HTTP underscore port underscore one equals equals eighty eighty and then we can see it's responded with eighty eighty so we could do any kind of funny number uh, any value really because it doesn't really know what a port is. It's just responding whatever I set the value at all. So yep, so that's overriding whatever I set in the um, playbook. So you could you could see the value there where you may want to run it once and um, have it override what's currently set. So this pretty much covers what I wanted to cover for um, the variable section. 
So next video will be on gathering facts. Um, yeah, thanks for watching my video. As always, uh, catch the next one. So that concludes the video. As as always, I've um, popped on the screen now my Kofi page. Um, that's a great place to um, donate if that's something you're interested in um, to help support the this channel. Also, I've put um, the T Public page for any merchandise uh, I've got. So I've got a few t-shirts and stuff like that if that's anything you're interested in. And uh, finally, I've put my uh, Discord server details um, as well as in description for these things. Um, details so you can uh, chat there. Uh, I'll try and answer questions when I've got uh, a spare few minutes and uh, try and help you out where I can. Thank you.